Okay, back in the workshop, you may recall on the boat when we fitted the new ignition module that I mentioned I had done some fairly nasty crimping and that was just to get some pins into the unit so we could test it for uh, the purposes of starting that engine, that starboard engine. So what I talked about while I was down there, I mentioned that I was waiting for the correct connectors to come in the post and this is it. It's a uh, Metripack 150.2 four-way connector. It's an environmental connector, which means it has these three ribbed rubber bits on the plug side of it. That's the bit that goes into the module. And on the back side, we have this little rubber grommet with, again, three ribs. That will go into here when we've put the wires in it. So how do you assemble a Metripack connector? It's actually dead simple. You only need one special tool and it's cheap. You buy the connector block itself, then you have to buy the pins. They come on a strip like this, they're sold, I mean usually in industry that people buy these by the thousands or hundreds of thousands when they're manufacturing motor vehicles or whatever. I only wanted 20 so they just cut a bit off and it's really simple. You get the pin you want and you give it a little wiggle like this and it will come off. I'm sure there's a, a proper tool for uh, breaking these off but we're just going to wiggle them off like that. There it is, excuse my little dirty fingers, little pin. Crimp it that end, and then that's the end that goes um, into the pin on the module. Dead easy to put together then. So you have a bit of wire, um, and we're going to strip it a little bit shorter than we would kind of normally strip for many applications. So it only needs to be a little, little short little bit like that, not much to it. I'll show you why in a second. Twist the end. You only need to go a short way because when this goes in here, there's a little bit at the end there. I don't know if this is going to focus. There we go. This butts up against, so it goes in and it stops right there. We need to make sure that the um, insulation for the cable is in that second part of the crimp. So it only needs to be quite short. So dead simple. That goes in there. We use this is the special tool. It's a crimper. This one cost me 17 quid off Amazon. You can buy if you buy a Tyco or an AMP. Um, you can spend 70, 80, 100 quid on one of these. This one was 16, 72 quid. I don't do this very often. It's not worth me spending that kind of money. Anyway, uh, so the cable's in the thing, in the uh, pin. Crimper goes in like that. You line it up and you give it a squish. Give it a nice, decent squish like that. And that will have crimped down on the cable, if you can see there. We've still got to do the strain relief on the insulation of the cable. Same tool, next size up, then we put it in there, then we get it straight, of course, not like that. Uh, if we can get it in the straight. No, I can't. How's that going in? There we go. And we give it a crimp, a chunk like that. Then we've got strain relief is crimped, as is the cable itself. So there we go. Dead easy, just a crimp, special tool, few quid, it's nothing expensive. Now this is a pull to seat connector. Uh, I know some of my ex aircraft engineering colleagues watch these videos and you'll be oh so familiar with this type of connector. Of course you normally work with things of a much higher quality, but um, this is a, a pull to seat. So in this case we actually pull the connector through. Lots and lots of these type of connectors, the weather packs, um, lots of automotive ones. You actually put the pin in from the back, but we don't do that. This one specifically pulls a pin in through from the front. And I just need to remember which way around it goes. So the red wire is in pin A. Pin A, I don't know if you can see, is here we go, A. So we need to go into that hole there from the front. And then when we do that, we just have to make sure we get the pin the right way up. And that means that, I don't know if you can see, there's a little tang, a little tang it's just there, so that needs to go at the bottom. So that's cool. So at the bottom, and actually, you can see it sits into that slot. Oops, in there like that. Now they say pull to seat. They kind of want you to pull on this. I'm a little bit reluctant to pull on my freshly crimped cable. We can put it a little way, and then the last little bit, I'll just pop it in with a screwdriver. Click. There we go. Click. Here it is. Clicks. So the front part of the connector that goes into the module has this weatherproof seal here. The rear part has the green bit, which you slide over like this. Slidey, 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 slide. And then that just pops in the back like that. So that's the first wire made up. There we go. Dead easy. And it just so happens in Blue Peter style, here's one that I made earlier. This one's got all four wires on it. 
ready to go back on the boat. I would really, really, really have liked to not extend the cables on the boat, but with the old connector being in such bad condition, I had to cut it off. I couldn't release these pins. You can release them, I couldn't do it. I meant I had to cut the wires off. We were then left. It was just too short then to reach into the module. So I've, I've put these fly leads on. We're not gonna use much. We'll only use a couple of inches probably there. And then what I'm gonna use is um, some heat shrink sealed crimps inline butt splices to attach this into the existing wiring loom. It's not the ideal solution, but we have no choice other than to buy a new loom. I'm not spending that sort of money. That's it, thank you. One of the nice thing about these Metropack and lots of these modular connectors is that once you've inserted this pin, um, it, it kind of seems like a one-way operation, but it is possible to get them out again. It's a bit fiddly. Um, you need some special tools for this one, I have to say, and this is a set of special tools I bought off Amazon very, very cheaply. I mean, these really are cheap and nasty, but again, I don't do this very often, so it's not worth me spending lots of money. The one we want is this one. It is a rear release type of connector, so that means we're going to push the tool in from the back. And what we need to do, uh, which way around does it go? So the tang is on top up here. Now, I can't do it from the front because it's a rear release connector, so we need to go on top of the cable at the back. Can't see, there we go. And then we slide this all the way home, give it a little wiggle as we go. Wiggly, 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 wiggle. And then in theory, this should now pop out. There we go. So we've now removed that pin. Um, I don't know if it's easily visible on this on this video, but the tang is just there. You see that bit that sticks up? So that will, when you slide that in, Slide it in this way, it will then stop the pin coming out that way unless you put this in and it slides effectively over the top of that tang to release it. So to put it back in again, we just put it back how we had it before, like that. There's my screwdriver. And uh, as we did first time, we'll click back in, that's it. She isn't going anywhere.